that you probably don't think much about your spleen. In fact, there's a good chance that you don't even know what it does. But if you find out you have an enlarged spleen or splenomegaly, you will learn quickly that it's an important organ. Let's find out more about an enlarged spleen and see what healing and treatment options you have. The spleen is a fist-sized organ located on the left side of the abdomen, just below the ribcage. It plays several important roles in the body. One of its jobs is to act as a filter. Another job is to produce antibodies that fight injection. As blood runs through it, the spleen filters out old and damaged red blood cells. The bad blood cells are broken down by a special group of white blood cells called macrophages. This function makes the spleen an important part of the immune system. It can also filter out viruses and bacteria in the blood. If the spleen detects something bad while doing its job, it will spring into action with the help of the lymph nodes by creating lymphocytes, which are the white blood cells that join to become macrophages. Now, sometimes your spleen gets overwhelmed and swells up. This is what is called an enlarged spleen or splenomegaly. A lot of conditions can trigger splenomegaly, including acute or chronic infections, blood disorders, splenic congestions, liver diseases, autoimmune diseases, some cancers, and other conditions. In the US, the most common causes of splenomegaly are chronic liver diseases, malignancies, which are cancerous cells, and infections. When the body is fighting infections, the spleen works harder to produce antibodies against the infectious agent, leading to an increase in the volume of splenic cells, which can cause an enlarged spleen. In regards to the liver, at least one third of people with enlarged spleens have liver cirrhosis. Another one third of people with splenomegaly have malingenesis, such as leukemia or lymphoma. Around 3% of college freshmen in the US have enlarged spleens due to the high rate of infectious mononucleosis in young adults. Up to 80% of people from tropical regions have splenomegaly, mainly due to chronic malaria and parasitic infections. When you go to the doctor and they're pressing around your upper abdomen, one of the things they're feeling for is an enlarged spleen. This is called palpating, not to be confused with palpitations. Heart palpitations are described as fluttering in the heart, but palpating is a method of feeling with the hands during a medical exam. It's pretty rare for a doctor to be able to just find the spleen easily, but if they palpate it well below the rib cage, that could be a sign that something is wrong. You might also pick up on some of the symptoms of an enlarged spleen. The most common is abdominal pain or discomfort in your left shoulder, especially when taking a deep breath. You may also notice that you feel full after eating a small meal because splenomegaly is usually a sign of another condition. You could have symptoms of that, or maybe not at all. That's why the doctor palpates around the spleen during a routine examination. The spleen normally weighs about six ounces, but when enlarged, it can gain up to four pounds. If the spleen is enlarged, there might be something big going on in your body. So what happens next? Your doctor will likely order some blood tests to look for markers or specific diseases or cancers. To confirm the enlarged spleen, you'll likely have a CT scan or ultrasound. An abdominal ultrasound uses high frequency sound waves to see structures inside of you. The ultrasound tech or a doctor can take digital measurements of your spleen during the procedure to see if it is abnormally large. The ultrasound allows the doctor to diagnose an enlarged spleen. Then they need to figure out what exactly caused it. Treatment for splenomegaly is done by treating the condition that caused the enlarged spleen in the first place. Success will depend on what's the cause. Cancers, blood diseases, and autoimmune disorders can be more difficult to treat, and the spleen could remain enlarged for as long as it takes. If it's a simpler or treatable illness, sometimes the spleen can go back down to its normal size rather quickly. So what happens if the spleen is enlarged long-term? Are there options for healing splenomegaly? One of the complications of splenomegaly is hypersplenism. An enlarged spleen may become overactive, trapping, or removing too many red blood cells. This can lead to anemia, a low white blood cell count, or a low platelet count. In rare cases, an enlarged spleen may rupture. This can happen spontaneously or due to impact to the abdomen. It is life-threatening, so if you have splenomegaly, there are some precautions you should take. If you have an enlarged spleen, be careful to avoid trauma to your abdomen. It's best to avoid high contact 
contact sports or get into situations where you could easily be injured. Someone with an enlarged spleen is considered immunocompromised. And the good news is eating a healthy diet consisting of nutrient-dense foods will help your immune system fight anything that comes along. Consider anti-inflammatory foods like brightly colored fruits and vegetables, green leafy vegetables, medicinal mushrooms such as reishi, cordyceps, and turkey tail, lean proteins including salmon and wild seafood, nuts and seeds like flax, hemp, pumpkin, and chia, unrefined oils such as extra virgin olive oil and coconut oil, and herbs and spices including turmeric, garlic, and ginger. These foods will help support immunity and lower your risk of developing diseases linked to an enlarged spleen. Cutting out ultra-processed foods such as fast foods and sugary snacks can also help lower the risk of conditions linked to splenomegaly. Supplements such as turmeric, burdock root, omega-3 fish oils, and milk thistle can help promote spleen health and fight inflammation. The spleen can be surgically removed as a prescribed form of treatment. In this scenario, the liver and lymph nodes will take over some of its functions, but you will likely need to take medication for the rest of your life because you'd be immunocompromised and more susceptible to being sick. With that said, it's still possible to have a normal life without a spleen. If you've enjoyed this video, MedShadow has others to help you protect your health and be on alert for medical harm, including the side effects of medication. Like, share, and subscribe for more health videos. Learn more about symptoms, conditions, and side effects at MedShadow.org.